the the genesis of of this of this paper is it's actually a five five part paper was um the rector at at the seminary which i teach was was asking me to um sort of explain to the seminarians the the theory of darwin um and in sort of my perspective on on why it falls short as an explanatory mechanism for for the uh arrival of many different life forms on earth so I, it's definitely covered it already in in my book in in chapter 11 of my book but what people will get through this blog series is a, a sort of um summary of of that teaching so okay yes so i i think on the side of the of the church the church uh, this is one of those questions where the church says to us um you're not uh, obliged to believe um either way that you that we have a, a certain freedom as catholics mm-hmm. to to explore the scientific evidence of whether um this mechanism that darwin proposes of random mutation natural selection is able to account uh, for the origin of of life forms or or not you know so uh, we just look at the scientific evidence and whether uh the it shows that the darwin's mechanism is able to explain everything or whether it science shows that it isn't we know that it comes from god so so mm-hmm. it's not it's not going to compromise our faith either way mm-hmm. you know we know that god had to directly create uh, human beings the first human beings adam and eve but all of the other life forms they they could have originated by some sort of natural process that god embedded in the nature there's no problem believing that so but the the thing is it has to be backed up by scientific evidence mm-hmm. solid scientific evidence um and i think when darwin pr- proposed his theory um back 150 years ago it was plausible you know that people had come up with uh, very plausible naturalistic theories to explain the the origin of of um geolog- geological forms on on this earth the geological formations um we think now it's it's very clear that it's just long long term processes that have caused the formations of the, of the various features of the earth they weren't in other words the earth wasn't just created this way the way mm-hmm. we see it today that that originally it was covered with with water and then uh slowly the crust formed uh, as is described in in the second day of genesis um and then over time you you have um the atmosphere of the earth thins out and um the various uh sort of continents form that that sort of thing over a long period of time so so what darwin was was trying to speculate is perhaps nature also is able to produce different forms of life um and he proposed a a theory as to how that would take place um so he didn't have enough um sort of scientific tools and and uh field studies at the time to thoroughly investigate his theory um and we now have much more information than he had and okay. especially at the biochemical level um at the the level of of the DNA and the cell we know so much about the cell today it's absolutely fascinating um but one major thing that the darwin did not know that we know today is that every single living thing Uh, whether it be a, a bacterium, a protozoa, or a plant, or or an animal, or a human being, all of them run on on cells, mm-hmm. and every single cell contains a coded language, um, similar to to like a programming language. You know, you th- you think of Java or C plus plus, what have you, mm-hmm. where where you have this this language that contains instructions that are then interpreted by a compiler and executed on the computer. Um, well, our DNA. works like that. So it's not just a question of chemical combinations that are going on in the cell, but but the the cell knows um the code of DNA and it understands what the DNA is saying and it interprets it and it executes these these instructions in order to build the various molecular machines in in the cell. Um and basically specify what these these machines and these cells are to be doing um at 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 a level of of complexity that really boggles the mind is far beyond any technology that we've we've ever developed as human beings so if you look into a cell and you find that there's a coded language there you ask yourself is nature able to produce that on its own and the in the clear answer is obviously not there's absolutely no way for for nature to do that um so there's no way for nature to to take just mere chemicals and construct a coded language in the first place and then once you have life forms um then is is nature able of its own power to sort of rewrite the code in mm-hmm. order to make another animal 
um, that of itself it also it, nature is not capable of doing that so so the Darwin's mechanism of random mutation natural selection where you have just little changes little genetic changes that slowly over time develop into drastically different different animals um, we know now that, that it's only able to do just a little bit just little changes like the the famous finches on the Galapagos Islands so the Galapagos Islands, you had uh, a drought, for instance, and the, the birds with the bigger beaks were, were able to break into seeds that are well harder. So all the, all the soft seeds were eating up. Mm -hmm. And so the birds with the bigger beaks were the only ones able to survive because they were able to eat the, the, ones, the seeds that were harder. So when you have only the, the big beak birds surviving, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you get a bunch of finches with big beaks. It's sort of like a new yes. breed of dog. Yes. Right. So, so Darwin, Darwin's mechanism is able to explain that, but that's about as far as it can go. Just sort of little new species, new biological species of, of finches, um, other, other changes in, in uh, little changes in bacteria, but not um, a, a radical diversification of, of animals. It's, it's, it's incapable of explaining More that. Adaptation is what, would that be closer to that? Was that what we're yes. talking about here? Ad you can adapt to sort of. Well, he was, around you or the yes, yes, it's that adaptation that uh, accounts for the, the changes in the finches or, or the changes in various fish in, in, the, in the lakes of Africa or what have you. And uh, Darwin was, was speculating that perhaps that adaptation has no limit, mm -hmm. that it can keep going, that you can have the, the, that effectively there's no boundaries on the variation possibilities of plants and animals that they can keep varying so much that they can turn into drastically different things. Um, but again, a, a, a thing that we know now is, is that one thing we, we, they've been able to do since Darwin proposed his theory is push the boundaries of various species. There's something called saturation mutagenesis, where you take the whole genetic code of, of like a fruit fly, mm -hmm and you change the, the genetic code when the embryo is developing and you change all the genes and what they've discovered is that you can get uh, most of the time you just get dead fruit flies so, so most of the time it doesn't um, you don't get um, anything fruitful <laughs> to, to use another pun <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but you, you do have some, some big changes in the sense that you have an extra pair of wings or you have like a leg and this has actually happened a leg growing out of the head of, of the fruit fly but you don't get anything that, that changes the fruit fly into a different animal um, so they've, they've tried all the possibilities so that